Packers Daily Chat. The Green Bay Packers set to announce, going live momentarily it looks like, uh, set to announce the 15th head coach in the history of the franchise. We thought what better way to uh, usher in a new era than to react live to the press conference to whatever Mark Murphy, Brian Gutekunst, and the new head coach Matt LaFleur have to say for themselves as they take questions from the assembled media. You should be able to hear their audio. Let me know if you can't. Uh, at the moment, I cannot. But uh, they are just taking the stage at the moment. Gutekunst, Good LaFleur, afternoon. and Mark Murphy. There's Murphy uh, talking to everybody. Andy, could you turn it up a little bit? This is That'd a be great. very Thank exciting you. day. Oh, Mark Packers. Murphy's very excited. Think, uh, it's a great, uh, great day for the organization. Fox, what's the uh, over under on Murphy bad jokes? Today, Whatever it is, take uh, the over. Uh, Matt LaFleur as, uh, as our next head coach. Um, I believe we found a, a great fit for the organization and this community and really excited uh, for people here, our players, people throughout the building and the community uh, to meet Matt. But first, I uh, want to uh, thank this a number of people. The head, uh, CEO, first, uh, our Green search committee. Reading off of uh, it was, uh, up you know, this is, yellow and I'll talk eagle, a little bit about no the pad. process. Paper. But, uh, Not even a pad. The last month, we put a lot of time and effort uh, into finding the right person. Hey, you got the lower third. Our search up. committee well done, was crucial in that. Brett likes the Packers. Members of the search too, committee. Brett? It's amazing. Uh, were Brian uh, Gutenkunst. Uh, he was uh, instrumental in this whole process. Uh, just uh, really. Great to work with. Uh, Russ Ball, uh, our Russ Ball uh, getting a executive shout out. vice president, uh, nice. was there. I'll talk a little bit more about their involvement particularly, but those two were crucial uh, in the so process. Russ Ball did and, and attend the interview. Uh, Very me. nice to know. Uh, also, Ed Policy uh, was involved uh, in the search. For those of you who uh, don't know, Ed Policy is most likely being groomed to take resources. Mark Murphy's and position. And then Jason Waller, Mark Murphy uh, ends up moving on whenever you that all is. Know, uh, and uh, was, was very, very helpful at all uh, as well. Uh, also, uh, I wanted to thank uh, our leadership council of our players. Uh, they were uh, very, very helpful uh, to me Interesting. and Brian in the process. Uh, the day after the uh, season ended, Brian and I sat down with the leadership council. Uh, those are uh, leaders from every position group on the team. So nine different players. So Murphy and, acknowledging uh, they didn't took talk about specific from candidates, the players. Uh, but that talked, is uh, new had a really good conversation. Talked for uh, quite a bit of time about uh, what they wanted, what they looked for. Did he in, bring uh, scissors, Brett? I'm sure they're under and the also table. Also talked about uh, <laughs> the team and some of the issues that they saw within the team, and it was really, really instrumental in ter in terms of forming my thoughts on what we needed uh, in terms of the next head coach. Uh, also, I wanted to thank the candidates. Uh, we ended up interviewing 10 candidates. We have two Bretts uh, in the chat named excellent. after Brett Favre. All great I like that. Uh, NFL coaches. Uh, there was a lot of diversity and uh, really uh, enjoyed it. We Murphy learned a lot. After the Lions process, debacle. Working uh, on this, Sosa. about yourself, uh, about the different candidates, and I thought the process worked very well. Uh, I do want to give special mention to uh, one of the candidates, uh, and that's Joe Philbin. Um, I'm going to get a little emotional here. Uh, Whoa, Murphy getting choked there's up. There's not a finer man that you will ever meet than Joe Philbin. And uh, what he has done for this organization over the years, and particularly want to thank him uh, for what he did under difficult circumstances coming in. That's uh, hella classy for Murphy. And uh, what he Gotta did it up for us on during those four weeks. Um, I just have tremendous respect for him and uh, wanted just to, to acknowledge that. In terms, of the, uh, in terms of the process, um, it really started in, in early December, that first week of December. And, um, you know, I think by making Ismail, the coaching yes, Brian change Gutekunst is at the, is at the uh, during table. During the season, all three of them it are. really gave us a big advantage. Uh, I mentioned before the, uh, uh, the search committee, uh, over that, that first month, uh, we met on a regular basis. Uh, we did all kinds of background uh, research on different candidates. Uh, we made calls, we vetted candidates, uh, and uh, so we really, uh, we had a, and we cast, and you'll see, obviously we cast a fairly large net, but, uh, you know, it was much, la much larger than the 10 people we interviewed. And, uh, and it, it really, it, I, I thought the, the committee worked well, and uh, it really, by getting that head start, it really allowed us, once the season ended, to hit the ground running 
uh, mm. with our search. Cover for um, his emotional reaction to, of firing we, uh, McCarthy talk about, four games. We talked to, to people in the season, on the uh, NFL, uh, NFL's advisory council. Uh, and they when his staff moves be announced during this helpful. thing, um, possibly. They, I tend to think they'll coaches, probably announce Patton coming back, but we'll see. Former general uh, really provide a lot of insight. Can we skip I do the want to Murphy give babble session? To, hey, Alex, uh, there's stuff to be gleaned from this. Kind of a little bit of the leader of that advisory council. I think I've mentioned it before. Uh, Charlie and I were roommates um, and, and go way back and uh, really have tremendous respect uh, for Charlie. I also talked to people from the Fitz, uh, Fritz Pollard uh, uh, Alliance and also were able to watch, and all of the search committee members watched Thanks, sir, uh, no, videotape sir. interviews that the NFL provided. Do, you know? And so we watched that for, uh, we watched those for all the candidates we ended up interviewing, and that was really helpful to see the consistency. Uh, between what we were seeing live and interviews they'd made in the past, and we also use that as a way to vet uh, some of the candidates. And um, you know, then uh, because we uh, had some time in, in December, uh, Brian and Russ Ball and I were able to interview two candidates uh, during the end of the season in December. You know, Pagano uh, and Caldwell get again strong out. candidates. And I thought for Brian and Russ and I. Uh, it was really helpful. Uh, I think every, every time we interviewed like somebody, oh, we got a little no. better at the process and uh, really felt good about that. Uh, hey, so guys, you expected Murphy ended, to speed we it up, I would to, to go. have a smoke uh, Wednesday, and relax. Uh, we sat down and interviewed J Joe Philbin. Uh, he, was, uh, he was the uh, Tim, I know first you can candidate through, we interviewed uh, after the season ended. And, His uh, zip fired. I love that that's like the about, number one question. Uh, the... Um, <laughs> A Friday to Sunday interviews. Oh. So during that time, uh, we inter ended up interviewing uh, seven candidates. It was a little bit of a whirlwind, uh, and I, I should. I'd be remiss if I, I didn't uh, give, uh, give thanks to a number of people. Uh, first, uh, oh, Linda no. Newthalls, uh, and putting the logistics together. I mean, just so you know, I mean, we went from Green Bay to New England to Memphis. We stopped. We were, we were yes, we know. We, we all have Twitter, Mark. <laughs> so apparently, it was a... Pretty strong headwind in New Orleans and Miami and Nashville, and it was crazy trying to get everything together. And uh, Linda just did a great job. Uh, the pilots from uh, Jacob, Logistics, we don't know about Philbin uh, yet. I think at one point our GPS no. system went down. They assured us we were still safe. There was a backup, but uh, then we had uh, we also uh, I, uh, Kelly Heim, uh, Brian's class, administrative assistant, and Pat Scott were instrumental, and it really nice to really, see Murphy uh, finally at the us, mic. I uh, really very much to, agree uh, to get get through that process and allow us to focus uh, on, on the interviews. And uh, so, you know, I'd say so, um, you know, went through that process. Um, you know, we had, uh, as I mentioned, uh, a total of nine interview, 10 interviews. Hey, uh, delivering the mail while you do this. Well nine, done, man. And uh, quite honestly, no one really stood out. Uh, everybody, there were a lot of strong candidates, but, um, you know, there wasn't one that just jumped out at us. And so um, Matt was our, our last candidate, and um, we'd heard great things about Matt through our vetting process. Uh, a lot of the coaches and others that we talked to. No one to, stood uh, out, about, and then they got uh, to his, Matt, uh, and then he just his, wowed them? His background, his experience. And uh, so we were really excited uh, going into it. And uh, so uh, we interviewed Matt in Nashville on a sun Sunday afternoon, uh, and uh, really uh, it went well. Uh, I, you know, and, and I, I think Matt uh, can probably speak to it, but uh, I wanted to make sure, you know, that we're, we've been traveling so much and, you know, we've been meeting with so many different people. And so we went through the interview. I, I guess I'd say a couple things about Matt. He was uh, the most prepared interview, the most prepared candidate. It was obvious that he'd really done his research. He knew all about our, our roster, uh, our coaches, mm. uh, everything. And, and also, uh, he just was very genuine and very natural. And rather, it really felt like more of a conversation rather than an interview. And uh, so it felt really good. Right, yes, that is and, the implication. Uh, Not so, impressed uh, by as, McDaniels. After the interview, or any of the other ones. Uh, Russ and Brian and I all looked at each other and uh, we said, that was really good, wasn't it? And, uh, you know, so, and I said, you know, I, I think he's our top candidate. Uh, yeah, and I remember when Brian the said, information wasn't he's available. He's my top on candidate, the and then Idiot. Russ said he's my top candidate. So we talked. We talked a little bit about it a little bit more on the flight uh, flight back to Green Bay, and uh, I wanted to make sure. We, <laughs> we know you did on, interviews. Is you know, look fired or not? So much and talking to so much people. 
Uh, a couple other things that uh, I, I wanted to make sure we were careful about. Kind of a slam on the other candidates. Yeah, Luke, really, just a little uh, bit. Make sure we do, uh, we're making the, the These right other guys came in, didn't know what the hell they were doing, you know, didn't know who we were or what we were advantage. about. And let's make sure Shorter that, you know, because he was the last candidate, we uh, didn't give him extra uh, extra attention and, and, and give him, uh, mm -hmm. you know, more credit than, yeah, than walk he it back deserved. There, Mark. And the other thing uh, that I'm always How involved was Russ? Apparently he was on the trip. Is, uh, you want to make sure you hire the best candidate and the best person for the job, not the best interviewer. And so uh, we talked about that. Let the man talk. So no one's stopping him. And so uh, we came into the office uh, Monday morning, and uh, 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 Brian and Russ and I met, and we all said the same thing. You know, I still feel the same way. Uh, we all felt the same way. Uh, we knew that he was the right person. And uh, so after that, I uh, wanted to make sure we did uh, all of our background research, and, and that all checked out, uh, brought together the entire search committee, and, uh, and went through, and uh, we, we said this is the right person and uh, decided to move, uh, move forward uh, quickly. And uh, so uh, a couple other things, just on, uh, and I want to turn it over to Brian to, to make his comments uh, regarding Matt, but uh, just a, a couple things that stood out about Matt. Uh, first of all, great experience. Uh, you know, is he, this Morse uh, code college level, is gone? Played, uh, played the game, played the quarterback. I'm a little biased. Uh, I really like the fact that he played at a smaller school. Uh, wasn't uh, a superstar, I think, uh, you know, and, and really learned the game. Uh, he's a coach's son. Uh, that, uh, I love that, and I think he's grown up around the game. And, uh, you know, just uh, any – I like the school, to me, small school thing. He had yeah, like a Murphy unique Center. combination of a, a quiet confidence, uh, but yet a humility. And uh, just really, really felt very good about everything. You people and, are so um, obsessed with Ron's In terms of it. my mind um, and the searches that I've run for head coaches and others, uh, there's really two keys in, in hiring uh, the right person for the job. I think job they'll get into how much of the staff coach. will be cleared. They'll Number definitely one, be asked you want to make about sure it. They're a great we'll fit. see if they offer it up. And uh, we felt uh, very, very comfortable with that. You know, he's, uh, he's from Michigan, uh, very similar to, to Green Bay. Um, uh, he's a humble person. I think he's going to really fit in well with the community uh, and, and certainly in the building here. And the second part of that is um, you really want somebody that uh, <laughs> has uh, If we don't get a dodgeball reference, I'm out of here. You got that right. And, you know, that, I guess that's easy to say, well, wouldn't anybody be excited to be the head coach of the Green Bay Packers? Well, uh, there's some candidates that we talked to that, um, you know, we're looking at a number of different positions. Maybe they just got fired, and are they really excited about this opportunity? Uh, but with Matt, it was genuine, and he was really, really excited about it. And, uh, and I'll just share this one story. Um, oh, Here we and, go. Uh, and, and the other thing I'd say, so putting together excited about it and then having the ability and the experience. Oh, I forgot one of my really notes. Make a forgot one of my bullet and points. That's what I, I see in Matt. And so... Um, Monday, after we went through the, the meetings and uh, kind of did our final research on, on Matt, uh, Brian and I called him. And so I uh, called him on the phone, and uh, I said, you know, Matt, I'm really excited. I want to offer you the position as our head coach. And it went kind of quiet, and I thought, oh, geez, did the connection break? <laughs> and uh, the first thing Matt said was, uh, I'm speechless. Uh, so I knew then that this was a genuine excitement. So... Uh, and then he called I, his I'm agent, really, and then his agent really called excited. Adam Schefter. I think uh, we have found uh, a gem in Matt and uh, really excited about uh, the future under his leadership. But, Brian, I don't know if you want to add anything to, uh, to, to what I oh, talked okay. about. Okay, Brian Gutekunst gets the mic. Here we go. Really excited to, you know, to have really Matt excited. the floor family, part of Packer Nation. Um, you know, I thought the, the process, like Mark talked about, was excellent. Um, you know, for me... Um, you try to make this as simple as possible, and we wanted someone who could win, you know, and, and that's what we found in Matt, you know. Um, I think this is uh, an exciting time for the Packer uh, fans and the organization uh, where we're headed, and I'm just really, really looking forward to He was literally to, speechless, you know, speechless because Murphy did all the and talking and the together. This first day has been, been excellent, so, uh, you know, we're ready to get after it, um, and I think we got the perfect candidate to lead us to where we want to go. 
Um, you know, Follow there's that. one goal here, always has been one goal. That's the win world championships, and um, we're excited to get started. Okay, boilerplate, boilerplate, Great, thanks, boilerplate. Brian. All right, Matt. So, it's been two, two long years here in Green Bay. We are ready to get back winning. And uh, oh God, it is, is my is pleasure like a to game introduce show. Matt LaFleur as the 15th head coach of the Green Bay Packers in our 100th season. Matt? No! Why are they applauding? Why are this you is, applauding? This is a little surreal for me right now, but oh um, my God. I just want to start off by thanking, by thanking Mark and Brian and Russ Ball for the opportunity. The impartial I, press I cannot tell applauding. you how honored I am for this, for this situation. Um, it's always been a dream of mine to, to be an NFL head coach, but to be the NFL, to be the head coach of the Green Bay Packers is, it is surreal. And I am extremely humbled and uh, it's gotta be crazy the, kid growing up in michigan really lambo vince lombardi fast forward his life you know, and he's um, the head coach of the green Mike bay packers Holmgren, at the age of 30 Mike whatever McCarthy that's is nuts. truly an honor i wouldn't be the man who i am today with a, if it weren't for the love and support of my family who are here today uh, i'm gonna get emotional <laughs> Um, my wife, she's she's the real rock star of the family. There's no doubt about it. Uh, Fran, my, why wouldn't they applaud? Here, it's Luke the Ty. media. I love them. You're dearly. not supposed to have my a rooting parents, interest for the Danny people that you're Christie. covering. Uh, you know, that's why there's no cheering in the press uh, box. Jane and Warner. Amateur. Uh, I love. I, I'm all about family. I love them. Love them dearly, and they are why. And it's not a circus. I'm the person that I am today. Uh, my brother could fine. not be like, here. He decided it was, was a hell of a lot more in his there best interest to be members. in Hawaii to watch this press conference. So, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'm all about family. If that's one thing you're going to learn about me, it's I, I love my family. Um, That'd be brilliant. The people in Tennessee, Miss Amy Adams Strunk, John Robinson, Mike Vrabel, the players, the coaches. I, I am so grateful for them to give me the opportunity to be a play caller in this league, and that's a big deal. And I, I, I feel like I would not be ready for this opportunity if it weren't for, the, for this You'll last season. You don't start crying yet, Tennessee. Matt. Wait till you see the roster. Um, <laughs> to all the former players that I've, I've gotten, oh, been able to it. coach uh, and, and really helping me to become the, the coach that I want to be. To my former mentors and, and coaches that have given me opportunities. It all started with Brian Kelly, uh, gave me a shot at at Central Michigan University, and then Gary Kubiak gave me my first opportunity in this league. Mike Shanahan, I, I learned so much from Mike. Sounds like Gary Kubiak uh, just, and LaFleur will be getting new you know, jobs at the same time. The ability to, to set standards and hold people to those I seem standards. I angry today. No more to Kyle Shanahan, ever. you know, showed me the importance of details, and, and really that's what separates Allison, you got that right. winning but in it's this the league. Internet. People are going to. To the Dan Quinn, to who really embraced brotherhood and the roast of Matt LaFleur. bringing people together to become the best versions of themselves uh. and, and, and really accomplishing things that you wouldn't be able to accomplish individually. And then to Sean McVay, so, so you have no idea what you're who talking is about. a close friend of mine. It doesn't mine, sound like anything. It sounds like a human uh, being. I know that's a little bit much for the, the other anonymous internet the troll, players, but and it really he sounds like a man. The best in everybody. A human being in every sense of the and word. And then just a little bit about so my touch vision here at Green Bay. More. It's basically, I, I want to develop a, a championship culture. It's filled with high character people that are, are, are dedicated <laughs> to becoming the best versions of themselves. <laughs> Uh, My philosophy is is really. I mean, to lead, EAD five one nine. Not only our football How can you team, not but, take but advice and in this building punditry from someone and, with such a um, stellar. We are going to be process driven on the internet, and we are going to be process driven in the pursuit of bringing a Lombardi Trophy back here to Green Bay. Questions, please. All right, finally, some hard hitting questions Come on, Pete. <laughs> from Rob Demosky. <laughs> Oh, Aaron Rodgers. The first question out of the gate. Have I you did talked have to Aaron the Rogers? opportunity to talk to Aaron, and I'll tell you what, I, I, I cannot wait to, you know, get to work with him. I think he's equally as excited, and um, yeah, there, there's a lot of work to be done in front of us, but, uh, you know, just looking forward to that opportunity. Yeah, I, I, I would add uh, no, Aaron was part of that leadership council uh, that Brian and I met with, and uh, his input was uh, part of uh, 
the overall input we've received, but it was very helpful as well. Matt, did you speak to Aaron before or after you accepted the job? Like, when did you talk to him? Yeah, I, I briefly spoke to him prior to accepting the job, and that's kind of how I had an idea that maybe I was in the running for it. Okay, once, uh, <laughs> not to jump in here, once, yeah, Brian can. Yeah, once, once we kind of narrowed in that, you know, that Matt was our guy, um, you know, I had Aaron reach out to him. That's interesting. So we heard from Rogers before he even officially got the job. Uh, you know, I can't speak to that. Now, what do you say about your staff? Who's staying? Uh, do you have any uh, official decisions there? Uh, no, you know, I just got here last night, so that we're still in the process of evaluating. Obviously, I want to talk to everybody in the building and try so, to get a feel for no staff you know, move is uh, going to be announced here today. There's certainly clearly. going to be guys that we're going to look at keeping and, uh, you know, we're, we're Aaron was not part of interviewing people. That's the internet trying to get it twisted. I have not had a, the opportunity to sit down with Mike. Um, I plan on doing that very shortly. Now, why do you think the offensive innovation that you have followed behind Kyle and Sean has really become the bulge so popular to get you into this position here? I just think when you look at the history and, and just, uh, you know, it, this is a results-oriented business. Uh, and I think just being a part of that offense, I think it's it's sound quality football, and, and we've been able to get the most out of out of, out of our players. And, and yeah, really guy feel, some, it feels like he's 12 years old. Yielding results. This guy needs to loosen up a little bit. Loosen up, oh, baby. There, there's an you got the keys. Incredible amount of talent here, and it all, you know, obviously, anytime you got a, a quarterback of David, that's not even right. Caliber of Rogers Ed didn't Rogers, prove anything. Um, Judy comes asked him to reach out. We're gonna have high expectations. It's that simple. I know people are gonna pump up the drama of it. That's all it was. Just like you said, I, I just think developing and communicating, um, you know, being in constant communication David, yes. with him and. I mean, that's, that's how you develop the same relationships. Power you got to get to know place. each other. Obviously, he needs to know that, um, you know, I, I care about the players I work with. There's no doubt about it. And, and it's not just Aaron. It, it's going to be all the guys. I want to get to know everyone, every, every player on our roster. You talked a lot about family. What, what drives you? What makes you tick personally and professionally? What I drives you? Right what there. makes you tick? I mean, um, not, not only that, I, obviously, um, you know, winning drives me as, as equally as, as much, but it, certainly they're, they're a big reason why I, you know, do what, they, do what I do. And, you know, they, they make a lot of sacrifices for me to be able to go and, and they, they don't, you know, my kids don't get to see their daddy all that much, especially during the season. Um, but, you know, I know that I've got the full support of them. You can tell he's kind of scared. Love, I don't think he's scared. I think he's nervous. The they're to the, he just named that the head coach the Green Bay Packers. He's in a room full of people it's, asking it's him so questions. It's special for them to you know, He's done a little bit of a media, media availability throughout his career, and, but nothing like this. I think that you know, all these NFL players, kids look up to him. So I think it's, it's a unique opportunity for them. And, what question would you ask? And, I would ask how much from previous stops offensively is he going to incorporate and how much new stuff he's going to bring. Head coach, and specifically, and you know the trend around the league is Sean McVay, Kyle Shanahan. Yeah, no, it was it was um, really more of the quality of the person. Uh, but you know, I think they wanted somebody that uh, would hold players accountable. And the other thing that, uh, and Brian could speak to the, to this as well. He was there. Um, talked a little bit about how they felt a complacency had set in uh, among some players and coaches. And so, in my mind. Um, you know, I, that was something that, as we went through the process, that was kind of in the back of my mind if there's He'll something we could do it, to kind of shake people up so we don't have the complacency. John Thomas, you are absolutely 1,000% correct. Every person in this yeah, chat would be nervous uh, you know, I would say, shitting themselves uh, well, first if they were all, in that position. Wally, the person, and um, what we'd heard about him, but particularly seeing him in person, you know, the quiet confidence. Levi, the um, initial the I would say, word is you know, he will call players, it, but I'm hoping someone will ask him The way his career has un gone and uh, played out, uh, it's, you know, it's very intentional. I think he's gotten, uh, you know, going back, you know, uh, starting Mike, with I'm Washington. You know, I think he had great experience no there. Worked with a number of different quarterbacks. 
then the two years in Atlanta, uh, and then you know going to LA uh, as the offensive coordinator. But you know, I think the other thing that was key in, in our minds um, was you know it was a risk for him to leave uh, LA and go to, to Tennessee. Uh, but he did it because he knew it would help him become a head coach to take on the play calling responsibilities. And uh, yeah, I quite honestly, nervous. if he'd stayed Are in LA, kind of year they had this year, that a serious he'd be question? the hot candidate. He'd be flying all over the country talking to everybody. Uh, but um, and I, I think the experience he had in Tennessee, there's no doubt, um, you know, that that's made him a better coach. And uh, we think he's absolutely ready to be a head coach. I don't know about talk, Luke. I don't know so much talking to the press is hard, but talking oh, in front of cameras and presentationally is difficult. Yeah, was, we had trouble here and there. Yeah. I'm sorry. Could you talk about that critical decision to leave Sean the Rams, go to Tennessee, some of the things you learned this year as a play caller, and then the next step it as you manage the games as a head coach? Yeah, I just think without a doubt that I I needed to challenge myself and. It would have been easy to stay in L.A. I mean, you, you, you look at the roster and, and you look at the success they're having there this year. And in place, and who uh, is he referring to? McCarthy? It, it Soren, you have to think that's there. an extension of it. I, took I mean, he was talking to about the leadership council, the players' get leadership out of my council, comfort zone and, and grow the as a coach. feedback he was getting from and, them at the end of the year. You know, that the lessons I learned this year. That's one of the reasons I learned that football is not always easy. You, you better up. navigate through some adversity, and I, I was proud of that, uh, you know, we went nine and seven, so by by the it it certainly did. Lance, live up they to have the a media coach for their head coach. His name is Jason Wallace. Certainly, and anytime after a while, we'll making, get his hands on this guy. He didn't make the playoffs. I mean, that's what we're judged by is the wins Daniel, and losses. Daniel, no, he hasn't we had an opportunity been asked to, play, if he's to have call a play-in play game in, uh, in fact, the last week of the season, and, and, right and unfortunately, no. didn't get it done. So, but I I know that. I would not be the coach I am today without having those experiences of, of this past season and just facing all you, uh, the, the adversity that we, yeah, we went yeah. through. Mark, you, met, you mentioned the, uh, you'd be the hot candidate you stayed in L.A. Was, you know the trend around the league is that, that young offensive team root type. Hey, coach, was that a priority of, of yours to go? With that? No, I you know, was I talking to drive through employees, so I can only uh, imagine you know, this type of pressure. Person. And, you know, there weren't specific nice traits friend. that we were looking at. We wanted to make sure we hired somebody who was a good fit. That said, though, um, yeah, uh, you know, I think his work with quarterbacks. Is it okay for me to say I can't stand Packers reporter questions? It, it is to totally us, fine. Quite honestly, you know, the way our team's structured, um, you know, we, uh, somebody who's going to be able to work with Aaron and uh, All right. you know, help I him play the Michael very Cohen best to he ask can play if he'll uh, ask is going to really help us win. He'll call plays. You said, you said that, um, you said you were looking for someone who could win. What mm. convinced you that, that Matt could, is that guy? You know, really, you know, um, it was, you know, when we started this process, obviously, you know, my contacts through the league, talking to different people about him, um, you know, not only his character, but his pedigree and the things he'd done, how he'd coach. I mean, you Scott, look at the, I miss the, being in that room on days like he today. Yes. In, in Washington, the different kind like, of skill yeah, sets they had, like how he adapted. Guys um, certainly in some Atlanta, what he, what he did there. Um, and just, uh, day in and day out, you know, no. the, when we got in the room with him, the presence that he had in front of us. It's so funny um, they keep mentioning the like presence he can, he that he had and team, his excitement you know, level and all this stuff, and then you get him in front of the press and he's like, be, fish out of water, nervous. Enough it's great. I want to see some of that. We, we need to get better and we need to play harder. And I thought he could, he could do that for us. Mark, Mark, Mark if you intend on calling plays, what ch kind of challenge is that? And then what's your philosophy on both defense and special teams? Yeah, I think uh, I absolutely intend on, on calling the plays, and certainly there are oh, there challenges He's in, calling the in, in regards to that. Um, certainly when you're making adjustments when, when the defense is out there, and that's why it's so important to me to hire quality people around me because uh, I'm, I'm going to need guys in, in those spots so that I can attend to whatever yes, it is David, he's we, calling plays. We're, we're doing on offense. What is your philosophy on what kind of defense do you want and, and also special teams? Yeah, I want a defense that is ball hawking, that is going to create turnovers, that plays Ernesto, fast. Ernesto, no, that was Tom Silverstein who asked and the question. really try, eliminates explosive plays. I think on special teams, it's, it's very similar in terms of, you know, I don't want to be, I want to be sound. I want to attack matchups on special teams. And 
we always talk about penalty free aggression. We want to make sure that penalty we are playing aggression. aggression I'm but down we have with to be that. Smart. We don't, we don't want to put ourselves in negative situations. Yeah, Mark, you're focused on what was the most important lesson you learned from dad growing up? From my dad? <laughs> that I better not cross my mom. Uh, <laughs> oh, that was cute. Come on. I bet he says att aggressive attacking defense. He didn't. I, I mean, he won the press conference just by not saying that. At one point in college, from playing wide receiver to playing quarterback. So, can you take me back to that moment in time? Why it was important to you to continue playing quarterback in college? Yeah, I think I, I loved. I love everything about being a quarterback. Uh, the ball's in your hand on. Silverstein on is every a hack. Play. And so, oh, you you're, you're banned for that. A that's, huge impact on the I game. I don't want and ignorance on the chat. And, Bye. To me, it was, it's more or less about looking at looking the 10 other guys in the huddle and, and knowing that you're going to get the job done. Matt, you must have done research. I know you Why don't I have the press him. conference? Because I'm in New York City. Ask questions and talk to people about his personality and how he is to work with. What impressions do you have of him? Because obviously that relationship is going to be pretty important around here based on what happened this past year. Yeah, you know what? I'm so focused on moving forward. Um, all I really care about at this point is develop a, developing a relationship with him and I think we're both on the same page. We are, we are committed to winning. There's no doubt about it. Uh, he is a competitor and I cannot wait to, to get started with him. Mark, Mark, Mark. It's all been surreal. What was the moment like last night when you first stepped foot in this building? Oh, uh, I mean, wow. This is an unbelievable place, you know. I've had the opportunity to be here a few other times. Matter of fact, ironically enough, uh, you know, we opened up the preseason well, here this Spock last year. Both I was here really when I was coaching do. with the Houston Texans in 2009, and then we played here in 2013. And it's just, you know, it's the closest thing to, it's got that college feel about it. You know, I had one year at Notre Dame, which was a, a very special place, but there, th there's no place in, in in my opinion, in all of sports, that is like game day at Lambeau Field. And the support, the, the, the love and support the fans have here is just incredible. And it's, it's even more incredible, actually, when they infiltrate your stadium. And uh, <laughs> when we played Green Bay back in, in 2016 in Atlanta, the, the first time we played them, and uh, you know, we're, we're using the silent count at home, and I'm just like, man, these fans are crazy. So uh, I'm so, so, oh, so yeah, blessed. Oh, yeah, a little red meat for the base so there. So to be a part like of Packer it. Nation. Hey, Mark, Mark, you guys, Mark, you said that, um, you know, the first nine candidates really didn't blow you away or jump out. If Matt hadn't blown you away, what would you have done? Would you have reopened the search? Or um, that's a good question, uh, Rob. I probably would have brought uh, our – two or three top candidates back for a second interview and, and may, maybe have looked at others. But we, we cast a pretty broad net in that first month. We really did a, a – and the, the committee did, really, a good job vetting all the candidates that uh, we thought would, uh, would, would be out there. So we felt good about the 10 that we went with. One interesting and, note uh, is that he said earlier that thank they God, did, Matt, before offering him the <laughs> job, out. They, did the, <laughs> they did a background check and background work on it. Yeah. Did you give any thought to bringing him up here and talking further? Or how did he manage to answer all your questions in one afternoon? Yeah, you know, when you got the right person, um, yeah. Uh, well, I, I have to tell another story. I think Matt oh, said no. that the interview went well. Not another story. And at the end of the interview, he said, Mark, what's your time frame? And I gave him some bullshit. Excuse me. <laughs> but like, Murphy! Well, you know. Wow! Even higher slowly. <laughs> We're going to move forward with all deliberate speed, and uh, so I said, we'll, you know, we'll get back to you. He just dropped and, the bullshit. We left. We were, that's when we started saying, we, I liked him. Do you like him? We all liked him. But, uh, so it was the very next day. I, I think so, but of, I'm usually very trustworthy. I think, I, I, think a lot of, uh, I think a lot of this, too, was like Mark said, we, you know, we spent a lot of time you know, vetting these candidates, and obviously there's an interview part of that, you know, but there's a lot more to that, too. You know, there, we have resources throughout the league, um, contacts, and so, you know, that, that, that's because, like, let me try and save this. That's what I love Mark. about these guys, man. They're so honest. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, Matt, Mark, oh, the, uh, we're joking. How did you decide if they weren't the right fit or if they just happened to interview poorly on that particular day? 
Yeah, I don't want to get into the specific candidates. I, I thought, you know, all of, they all had their strengths and weaknesses. And at the end of the day, when the process works the best, it's identifying the person that's the best fit for us. And, you know, we really felt when that, under those cri that criteria, Matt really stood out. Matt, uh, all that talk with your relationships with Kyle and Sean McVay, what did you learn about yourself this past year that makes you different, that makes you your own guy and you're not just Martin an Apple picked off Murphy. Of Shanahan McVay tree? <laughs> it's a fair question. I, I just think, I know this, I'm going to lead, I'm going to be my own person. The, the way I lead is going to be different than Kyle, it's going to be different than Sean. And I think the only way to lead is you better be true to yourself. Um, these players, they're extremely smart, and you, you better be real, you better be honest, um, and that's, that's exactly how I'm going to be with these guys. Matt, we got two guys sitting next to you that both emphasize the importance of winning here. Uh, you've seen first-year head coaches before you in recent years have success right away. You know when you're at a place like Green Bay that kind of demands that, fans demand the organization does. What are the greatest challenges, do you think, to find that success immediately? And what gives you confidence that you can? Right? Yeah, I think there's a lot, of, a lot of great people here. And I think that you win with people. And we we got to continue to to bring great people in here. And, and that starts by assembling Jim, a great agree. staff. He's hitting his stride. Then, He's settled um, in a little bit, a little the less nervous now. After that and Talking a little bit more straightforward. Stuttering, uh, you know, the stumbling over the words is confident. gone. I feel, Very much agreed. I feel lucky to have the support of of these two gentlemen, and I think you guys will be happy with the product we put on the field. I'll throw the timeline question at you, uh, Matt. Uh, how quickly would you like to get this staff put together? It, at, as soon as possible. I mean, <laughs> I, 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 it's speed. no doubt. <laughs> I mean, we don't. We want to be very intentional about what we do. Um, so it, it's hard to put a, again a timeline on anything, but certainly, uh, you know, we feel like there's a lot of good candidates out there, and um, we are going to move as fast as possible and that starts immediately after this press conference. Mark, 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 Mark the, uh, the stats in, um, at Tennessee weren't the greatest this year. What made Thanks, you decide Timothy. that that wasn't an important uh, factor? Well, um, it, again, it's the person. And when you look behind the stats, uh, some of the injuries they suffered, I mean, the injuries are never, uh, never an excuse. But when your quarterback doesn't have feeling in his hands and can't throw 15 yards, that affects your offense. Mark, Mark, Mark mm. mentioned that you were done a lot of homework. Or you're the most called or the most prepared candidate. What sort of homework did you do on these guys before your interview? I I talked to a lot of people. I'm um, sure Matt will have I some kind of input when it comes uh, to the draft. Spent a lot of time studying the tape. Show I think that run. The, the tape is the number one tool you you better do as a coach in this league. Okay, so when yeah, you look at the tape, what did, what, did, what did you think of the offense, which you know was didn't get a lot accomplished for large stretches of the season? You, you're telling me to, are you asking me to comment on last season's offense? Like, when, when you were watching the tape, what did you think? Yeah, I, I think there's there's some very capable players here. And, uh, Ooh, very capable you know, it's going to be our, our job very to capable put players. these guys in the best possible position and, and put a winning product out on the field. Pete, just to follow up, the other thing I would say um, in terms of Tennessee statistics, um, oh, God. I, I think to me it shows Mark, creativity. I already uh, shut the door on that. You know, they, well, first of all, we would have been pleased to be playing in the last week, going into, you know, to uh, have a chance to go to the playoffs. But with the injuries they had and what they did in the running game. With oh, Derek Ryan, Henry, he, was, uh, he was talking about Mariota. And, and like Matt not said, having a feeling was, in his hands. What do you need to do to win? Or the Tennessee quarterback, not Rodgers. His personality and, you know, how it would be for someone new coming in. Gooch show or Murphy show, it's Gutekunst. So Gutekunst so has control of the 53-man roster. Everybody with their stupid pet little yeah, conspiracy you know, theories, the just get I'll over it. Gutekunst is, uh, is in charge of the roster. The Fleur is in charge of game day, making sure Atlanta, coaching, etc. Murphy is the CEO who hears from it all and makes big-time overarching decisions like hiring a head coach. But he has nothing to do with putting together 53-man roster. So I'm going to draw back on that experience. You know, again, it, it, it comes down to developing that, that oh, relationship, no. oh, that David. trust, especially with the quarterback. David, I so, love you too. Honestly, I, I'm not going to have any preconceived notions moving forward. I just want to try to develop the best relationship with Aaron because 
he is he is a key piece to, to, to the puzzle and a key reason why we, why we're going to get to where we want to go. Two more, please. Matt, you talked about that championship mentality, bringing it back and be process driven. What is that process meant for Mark? There was a different structure with Mike McCarthy. Does that change at all with the new hire here? At first, on just kind of what's your you said you're gonna be process driven. What's yeah. that going to be like? I, I just think the, the process is to improve on a daily basis. In this league or in life, you, you never stay the same. You you're either gonna get better so you're or you're gonna get one. worse. And so, our our mentality is gonna be get See, a little no, bit better. No, you say every he's day, the key piece the in response to him saying he's themselves. a key piece. That's if, been if the problem for the last the, decade. To move, if we He's been the key piece. On a day -by -day the basis, whole I think, thing I think they have to do a lot of games here. is make sure he's a key piece. Build more of a team around Rodgers. Not make it all right. on him. That is the whole impetus here for the next four or five years. How's that kind of starting? How's that thought formulating in your mind? Sure. What's he saying? Yeah, you know, I'll just say, you know, obviously, you know, you do a lot of work ahead of time, right? So you you hear, you know, all the good things and. And, and the other things that you want to check out, right? So we go through it, and um, you know, just pretty immediately, there was an ease, a, a confidence, you know. And then as we started going into, you know, some of the things that we went into the candidates with, um, you know, I think the vision that he had was aligned with with, with my vision and our vision, and uh, it just became more and more apparent that, you know, what we were trying to accomplish with this hire, he was a guy. Nathan, and, will be uh, with a minute-long you know, question. Walked him out afterwards, kind of, Your sentiment is you know, shared by Packers talking, PR. We came back in, and I'm just really glad that we all agreed, you know. Yeah, I guess, Jason, I, I would add, uh, one of the things, as I look uh, to the future, that's really exciting for me is the relationship between these two. Um, I think it's going to be a tremendous partnership. They're joined at the hip, and um, I think we're all aligned, and we're ready to get started and uh, get back to, to winning championships. Mark, real quick, does Matt report directly to you, or now does he report to Brian? As no, he reports to me. So okay, it's just like yeah, it's in the same way. That, that, was a, that was a question. I mean, Matt can address it, but it's, it's not an issue. No. Matt, what was that phone call like to Mark uh, It was incredible. Matter of fact, my wife and I were driving uh, to, to, to pick my kids up from school, and thought we were going to get in a car accident. She, she was at the wheel. Um, so, yeah. So he's already blaming somebody else. <laughs> so, no, it was incredible. I, I mean, I, I, when I tell you I was speechless, I, I, I was speechless because there's just so much tradition here, and I can't think of a, a, a greater place to, to be a head coach in this league, and really in all of sports. This is, this is a dream come true for me. Speaking of tradition, it's Clark Starr's birthday. Do you think this is just a coincidence? Or <laughs> <laughs> he was pretty good. <laughs> there we go. Here, buddy. Thank you, thank you. Matt LaFleur introduced as the 15th head coach in the history of the Green Bay Packers. Your man for the next probably four years, maybe five with the option if they take it, and maybe less if he sucks and he gets fired. So what did you think, people? Let us start with winning games, please. Well, Green Bay Steve, there's a lot of work to be done between now and week one and beyond, of course, but uh, cautiously optimistic is where I'm sitting right now after hearing from uh, Matt LaFleur. Can't say I was blown away. Can't say he won the press conference. He did, as uh, I can't remember who it was, said earlier, definitely settled into things as it went along, but he's not hired to win the press conference. He's hired to win football games. So we'll see. Now I'm worried about petting. Zachary, I wouldn't be. Uh, what does Packer Man think of the news? I don't know, Chad. I'll have to go to the, uh, the uh, office where Corey keeps him. Yes, he has his own office. Did Murphy lead off with a ribbon-cutting ceremony? No, Daniel, he did not. I dig it until I don't. I think that's pretty much, that pretty much covers NFL fandom, right? I dig it until I don't. Jonathan gives us a let's can go. I like it. Uh, overall impression, uh, like I said, I think he was very nervous to begin, settled in nicely as things went along. I certainly didn't see whatever it was they saw in the interview process, but they weren't really talking about the specifics uh, that they most likely were in the room that afternoon. 
Does Goot go after any of the solid free agent safeties on the market, Collins, Joyner, or Thomas? He should certainly have the means to do so. Um, but as I've said a number of times here, both on daily and on transplants, you know, there are going to be a lot of teams with a boatload a, of cap space. Um, I think my buddy Justice the other day tweeted out the Indianapolis Colt, Colts have roughly just over $100 million in cap space heading into 2019. Packers should be hovering around 30, between 30 and 40. So that tells you the disparity there. Uh, there will be teams that are able to throw ludicrous amounts of money at free agents. And I don't expect the Packers will be able to compete uh, on a regular basis with most of that. But uh, if there is a guy that he thinks can co come in, step in day one, uh, and you know, help augment what they're doing, I don't doubt that he will have the means to go and do it. Do you think the Packers are an attractive destination for free agents? Ernesto, I do. As long as they still have Aaron Rodgers, they should be. He papers over a lot of cracks, perception-wise. Um, they start losing continuously, or I should say continue to lose continuously. Uh, they pile up a couple more losing seasons. It'll get more and more difficult to get free agents to Green Bay. I don't care how he comes off to the media. I care about how he comes off to the team. Ken, that's more than fair. Uh, as I just said a little bit, little bit ago, it's not about winning the press conference. It's about winning games. And a big part of winning games is how he comes off to that team and how they play for him. Uh, I want, uh, I like what he had to say about special teams. I loved the penalty-free aggression, which pretty much is as close as he's going to get to saying that Ron Zook is gone. Of course, he wasn't going to say that in the uh, press conference. Mark Murphy just chose a head coach that he can control more than anyone else. I don't know, William, whoever he hired was going to be under the same amount of control, the same tier. Gutekunst, head coach, Russ Ball, Mark Murphy. So, I don't really think that makes a difference. Uh, Mike won games. Yeah, he did. Is Aaron Rodgers like LeBron? Does he recruit other players? Uh, if uh, last year is anything to go by, absolutely. Uh, Jimmy Graham is in uh, Green Bay in large part because of Aaron Rodgers. Now, you can look at the results and say that's a good or a bad thing, but uh, Jimmy Graham made no bones about the fact that he came to Green Bay specifically to play with Aaron Rodgers. Let's head over to Twitter, since there are Twitter questions. Um, see what's on the old tweet machine. Nate starts us off with, was a four-year contract good enough? I mean, if he had prior head coaching, would they have made it a six-year deal to match QB1? I'm trying to figure out what our record is if we do this again in four years, what our recourse is if we do this again in four years. I wouldn't worry too much about it. If they can remember when Mike McCarthy was first hired, it was a three-year deal that then got extended past that. Uh, a lot of teams this hiring cycle seem to be favoring this model of four years plus a fifth-year option. Um, you know, I think four years is a really good number to give your first-time head coach. If, yeah, if you get to that fifth year, you take that option, um, and then you have to talk about extension, it's probably a good problem to have. What do you think of Philbin as a coach? I found it surprising there was a report he could be retained but also find the idea of compelling given his experience with Rodgers. Well, I think you saw Mark Murphy choking up there at the beginning of the press conference in regards to Joe Philbin. Clearly, that is very much having to do with the personal tragedy that Joe went through the first time around in Green Bay, bringing him back, everything he had to go through after McCarthy was fired, taking over the reins, very difficult situation. I know lots of people in the chat, etc., online, like to poke fun at Philbin. I've been one of those people because it's the internet. That's what we do. But I think, you know, you have to step back and be appreciative of everything Joe Philbin has done. I do think he is a hell of a football coach. Probably not a guy who's cut out to be a head coach in the NFL. Um, the league, the history of the league, littered with guys who were excellent coordinators, excellent position coaches who just weren't cut to be head coaches. And I think Joe is probably one of those. Um, but yes, I think he's a damn fine football coach. Browns hired from within. Hardly see that anymore. Is it more antiquated or progressive to hire from within? By the way, name a team, not name the Chiefs. That was more fun to watch this year than the Browns. Made the Packers seasons bearable. Um, you know, I mean, it's antiquated, whatever you might call it. But uh, Freddie Kitchens, you can't look at the splits with that offense, the job he did, and not think that he should have at least had strong consideration. I'm not surprised they went that route. Um, I know a lot of people are surprised they didn't go with Mike McCarthy, didn't even interview him, but I'm actually not surprised given uh, the way 
you know, some of those personnel guys, Elliot and Alonzo, left the building. I think there was a bad taste in their mouth when they did so. I'm not surprised that Mike didn't end up in Cleveland. I join you in a shot after realizing the head coach of the Packers is indeed younger than I am. <laughs> Uh, did you see the tight end conversation with Marty B and Mercedes Lewis? I did. How will the offense be different for the tight ends under LaFleur? Andy, that's an excellent question, not one that can be answered right now. Uh, we'll have to see. I would think, given the job he did in Tennessee, really leaning on that running game, really trying to play to the strength of the personnel he had on hand, a large part will depend on the tight ends he has available to them, to him. Uh, but I think that if those guys demonstrate throughout the offseason and through camp that, yes, they uh, can be part of uh, a explosive offense, offer them something downfield, offer them something after the catch, then he will design an offense and or plays and game plans to feature it. That's been his M.O., but uh, they're going to have to give him a reason to do so. Let's head back over to the live chat. Gil Philbin in office next to Ted Thompson. Well, Ted Thompson's office, so to speak, now is down in Texas. He's no longer in the building on a regular basis. There's no way McCarthy could have controlled Baker. I don't think you want to control Baker. Philbin is not a QB whisperer. Did you see Rodgers this year? I don't think it's a question of anyone saying he's a QB whisperer, but it is a question of being able to reach Aaron Rodgers, which is, in Green Bay, a big part of the job. Well, oh, by the way, the Bears still suck. That's a great place to end it. Thanks a lot, everyone. Thanks for joining me for the introductory press conference for Matt LaFleur. Thanks for joining me on the chat. Thanks for your questions on Twitter. Uh, and thanks for, you know, checking out what we do at Cheesehead TV, whether it's on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, wherever we are. That's where we want to be with you, Green Bay Packers fans worldwide. We're dedicated to you guys. Thanks a lot, everyone. Have a great day.